What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So excited that you're here to join me again for another video. Today we're going to talk about Fisker Automotive and its merger with Spartan Energy Acquisition. So the SPAC is merging with SPAC. Um, kind of ironic. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to go over the history of Fisker um, because it was once a company, it went defunct and now it's back. Um, and we're going to kind of see the differences between the two where I see the new company, or I don't even want to call it a new company, but where the new version of Fisker is going to go compared to, you know, what they did wrong in the older version. So don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, sit back, relax, and let's get into it. All right, guys, so I thought I would start here. Now, this is the first iteration of Fisker Automotive, and they were around from 2007 to 2014, and they were most well known for uh, their car called a Fisker Karma. And it was kind of like a luxury, but like sporty, like uh, electric hybrid vehicle, right? So think like Aston Martin, but like an electric Aston Martin. And they were actually doing pretty good uh, for the first few years from the 2007, I think up to like 2012, uh, they were actually doing really good. Um, you know, they had deals with the Department of Energy. Um, they were sued by Tesla, but they actually ended up winning that case. You know, they took over an old GM uh, factory. So a lot of things were really going in their favor. And at a point in time, they actually kind of seemed like they were going to just shoot up and eventually take off. Um, but then in 2012, everything kind of started unraveling. And it began right here. It started with their batteries. So they had a recall um, in December of 2011. And then they had another recall in the next year in March. And then ultimately their battery supplier ended up going bankrupt, which obviously if you guys know how business works, if your supply chain is affected, your business is affected, right? So that was the first bad thing that happened to them. And then it was kind of just all downhill from there, you guys. Um, the Department of Energy actually froze their credit line next. Um, and then there was some scrutiny over the loan that they had because the cars were actually pretty expensive as far as I remember. Um, you know, during that time, we're talking like $100,000 plus for a car. Um, you know, so not, not too many people are going to be buying it. At least not too many people could buy it. Um, so that was, there's some scrutiny over that because the Department of Energy's goal was to create these, you know, electric options for people. And most people can't afford that. So that was, uh, you know, that was the next thing that happened. And then, of course, you know, it, everything kept going downhill from there. You know, they had, uh, you know, changing of their leadership constantly. Um, you know, they had to get new financing. They had Hurricane Sandy flooding their, you know, their um, European shipment. So they lost 338 Karmas that they were supposed to ship to America. And it was, you know, it kind of just tumbled down. And then eventually they were bought out and their assets were bought because it just, you know, it was kind of a mixture of bad business, but also a little bit of bad luck. Um, so that was the first iteration of Fisker. This is the Fisker Karma, like I had mentioned before. Um, you know, it was a plug-in hybrid sports sedan, right? So they wanted to make like a uh, uh, an Aston Martin-ish or like a Ferrari-ish kind of vehicle, uh, you know, that was electric. And it had over 400 horsepower. I think it had almost, uh, I think it had 1,100 foot-pounds torque. Um, and it just had one gear because it's an electric vehicle. But, um, you know, this was this was marketed by them and it was their their big thing. You know, it was the one that um, they were supposed to take off with. And, you know, uh, it just didn't work out. So these were some concepts that never really made it. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about the new company and, you know, what's to be expected with that. So that's a little bit of history on Fisker previously. And now we're actually going to go here and we're going to talk about the new Fisker, right? So same logo, new company or new, new setup, right? So the first thing I want to do, I just want to talk about the model of the car that they're bringing out. So they have something called the Fisker Ocean. And this is something I actually really like about companies, guys. I like when they have some sort of um, core value, right? Like uh, Apple's core value is, you know, trying to make technology that's going to make the world a better place and doing it in a green way. You have to look at a company's core values. Obviously, a company is around to make business, but they have something else that they really are, um, uh, that kind of makes them who they are. So this is the Fisker Ocean. Uh, it's the first, uh, or it's the world's first, most or the world's most sustainable vehicle, right? And the reason being is because they take... Um, you know, old plastic from the ocean, uh, sea net, like nets, 
plastic like junk basically and they recycle it and they use it for the uh, body on the car um, and then <laughs> I like this vegan interior right so it's plant-based interior like they're using uh, you know no leather you know they're not gonna have leather inside basically they're not gonna use animal parts or things like that um, so this is pretty pretty admirable um, it's gonna have 250 to 300 uh, mile uh, electric range which is great um, and then they're gonna have a, a lease option as well. Uh, one other thing I thought was really cool about it, I mean, it is an all-wheel drive SUV, um, but they're talking about having a, um, a uh, option on the roof to where it can have a solar panel that can charge it and get you up to another 1,000 miles a year for free that you don't have to charge up. It just does it for you. So that, I thought that was pretty cool. This is the interior, it's pretty nifty. Most electric cars are doing this. I think it's just a wannabe uh, Tesla thing. Although I think this is pretty unique. They have a little control panel right here and then the screens right here. So this is actually really neat. I actually do kind of like how that looks. Um, you know, and then they talk about their sustainability, you know, what they make the, the uh, device or the cars and the devices inside from. They're using polyester fibers, you know. So this is pretty neat. Um, you know, they have they have a lot of different options. This is the leasing option that I was talking about, right? So um, starting at three hundred and seventy nine a month, right? And you can cancel any time, which I think is kind of neat. Um, and then you have up to thirty thousand miles per year with a monthly rollover, no hidden costs. You know, blah blah blah. blah. I'm not going to get too much into it, but I thought this was pretty cool too. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's a little bit about the car they offer. Um, that's pretty interesting. It doesn't look like they talk too much about the power plant, but I mean, you're, if you're buying this, you're, you're not really buying it to do racing or anything. I mean, it looks like it actually goes pretty fast though. <laughs> Look at this zero to 60 in less than three seconds in this SUV. Wow. Jeez. Okay. So maybe it is pretty fast. This is a, yeah, this is in the twos for zero to 60. This is a, this is a Tesla Model S competitor right here, folks. So, wow. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right. Well, let's head into the investor section. And before we do, guys, just remember, I am not a financial advisor. I'm just some guy on the internet. This is not financial advice. It's for fun entertainment. So before we jump, jump in there, I just want to make sure you understand that. Now, jumping into the investor section. Fisker Inc. to list on the New York Stock Exchange through merger with Apollo Affiliated Spartan Energy Acquisition Corp. or SPAC. And this is kind of ironic to me that the SPAC's merging with SPAC, right? I think that's kind of funny. I'm pretty sure they did that on purpose, but it's neither here nor there. So let's see what they uh, let's see what they're offering, guys. Let's see what makes this a good deal, right? Because I mean, you can tell me about your product all day, but if you never make it or if you never get it to the market, um, AKA Nikola, uh, <laughs> then what do I care? You know what I mean? You, you got to prove to me that you you know you have a plan. So. Let's take a look here. So the SPAC transaction or the merger transaction is going to provide $1 billion. That's a lot of money. Okay. So $1 billion of gross proceeds to the company, including $500 million fully committed common stock pipe at $10 a share anchored by existing and new investors. So that's us basically. Um, so there's that. The proceeds are going to go right into the fully uh, fund to develop the new Fisker Ocean. So the car we just looked at, the funds are going right to the development of that, and they're going to start the production in 2022. So let's stop there for a second, guys. With that being said, profitability is probably going to be down until 2022. So if you're looking for like a quick, you know, you know, flip, and then you're done, and you can get in and out, this is probably not the play for you. I would say you're probably looking at anywhere from like three to five years for a decent size return on this. Um, and then whatever's after that is kind of, you know, speculative. But if you're going to buy this or if you're going to get into this, don't think that it's just going to flip and you're going to make all this money right away. Because this is going to be something that has to be, you know, funded. They're going to have to build the cars, ship them, sell them. And then that's when you're going to start seeing the, you know, the profitability for the company coming in. But like I said, you probably won't see that until 2022. So keep that in mind, guys, when you're investing here. Um, but let's keep moving. Pro forma equity value of the merger is approximately $2.9 billion. Wow, that's a lot of money. So pretty much, you know, you're already looking at almost $3 billion here, so that's not bad. They're going to combine the board of directors with existing Fisker board members and the people from Apollo Designy, so I'm guessing the acquisition group. 
I think that's okay. You want to have people who are involved in the investment in there, maybe to kind of ring in some uh, bad decisions. I mean, Fisker did make some bad decisions. I don't know if any of the original uh, Fisker board or executives from the original iteration are still around. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. But I think the goal here is to not end up like the old Fisker, not to make bad mistakes, you know, not to make a hundred thousand dollar car that people can't buy because I mean, you want to be profitable. So you want to be able to market to a vast majority of people. Right. So I think that's the goal here. Um, but I think, you know, I think that we should give them a shot. Right. I mean, it makes sense. It, it looks like they've reorganized. They have a vision. They have a, a goal. They have an affordable car, you know. This is how I see it. They're trying to make this a more of an everyday person vehicle. Uh, transaction advances on Fisker's mission of creating the world's most emotional <laughs> and sustainable vehicles and upholds its vision of a clean future for all. So this is the company mission I was talking about, guys. I do, um, I say it's not wise to get emotional with stocks. Like, I, like for me, I have some values, right? Like I won't buy a sin stocks. I don't believe in them. I mean, they can make you money, but I think it's d kind of dirty to make money off of people's, you know, addictions and things like that. So that's just kind of an example here. I like to buy companies that have a good vision for the world, that want to help and want to make the world a better place. That's just more of a moral um, uh, base for me, and that helps me when I'm investing to want to make better decisions. Now, you don't have to necessarily do that, but I do think that it helps with your mission as a company, and it gives you some kind of balance, right? Like, you know that you want to source your plastic from the ocean. You know you want to clean up the ocean. You know you want to create more electric vehicles for people. You want to make the world a better place for your kids, so you're going to work harder for that, right? When you're in it for just the money, you really are just in it for the money, you don't have any drive. Passion in in things that you do is the drive that I look for in companies, right? And I think if the leadership is actually passionate about this, they're going to do everything in their power to make sure that it goes through, right? So just keep that in mind. Oh, and then this is the initial, you know, uh, press release. Um, so, you know, there's that. Um, and yeah, I mean, as far as I'm looking here, guys, I mean, just the fact that they're already going to have a, almost a billion dollars right here to play with immediately, right? Um, 500 million of it being committed through the stock pipe. Um, I think that this is going to be a good mid-term play. Um, so yeah, I would say if you're going to invest, it's probably a good idea. I mean, it's no, no more scarier than investing in like Lordstown or any of those companies, uh, like, uh, Workhorse, uh, Lordstown Motors Workhorse or like Hylian or any of these kind of other EVs that are out here, um, or Neo. I mean, to me, they have a good plan. They're letting you know what's what's going to happen with the merger, how they're going to get their funds, you know, when they're going to have their production start. To me, they're already ready to roll. I think they have a plan for the next few years, and it's a pretty solid one. They know where they're getting their money, and they know what they're going to do with it. So these are the things you look for. Um, so yeah, in my opinion, I would say this is probably a really good investment, um, but you're going to have to hold off. So just keep that in mind, guys. All right, guys, with that being said, I would say, yeah, I would invest in Fisker. I mean, I think they, they've cleaned up their act. I don't think we're going to run into any of the bad luck and weird issues that they experienced in the past. And honestly, guys, I I really like the car. I, <laughs> I probably will end up buying one if it goes to production because it does look pretty cool. I would say I would probably want a little bit more range on it. But other than that, the thing looks pretty solid. Um... So yeah, guys, if, if you're looking for some kind of mid-range investment, this is the way to go. With that being said, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.